Oh my goodness. But, oh yes, I did. And I'm gonna tell you in a few moments what we're gonna do with all these. Look at this, guys. Scored a jackpot. Absolute jackpot. This was such a deal. 12 bucks a box at Superstore. And they had just dropped them off. It was all about right place, right time. These boxes always come up at various stores in our area in the season. These are wonderful uh, gems from the Deep South, as some would call it, Southern Ontario. And... Uh, I never get there in time. It's always running around and they're always sold out. And they had just put these in there. We'd actually been to Superstore the day before and they weren't there. So I know multiple times going to the store, but we're really on a mission to find pickling spice. So long story short, we go through a lot of peppers every year. And as you can see here on our plants, yes, we have 50 pepper plants. And yes, they're loaded with fruit. And it will come. But they're a ways off for now. And I know it's not going to be enough. Uh, we go through about five bags of our cut up frozen uh, peppers every year. Plus, I make a wonderful marinated roasted red pepper, which we're going to do in this video. So stay tuned for that. But first job here is going to be to get these chopped up, go through. Uh, what I like to do is go through the ones and anything that is a little bit riper and needs to be cut up quicker. That's going to be flash froze and bagged up in the freezer. I know freezer space is getting super tight, but this was too good of a deal to pass up. Even though the timing may not be perfect for me, we're still going to make this happen. So let's get busy chopping, wash. Let's, let's do it in the right order. Let's get busy washing, chopping. And freezing so basically my plan here is to go through each box one at a time and find see it's like this one for example it's starting to go a little soft on the end that's just from packaging and moving it around there's nothing wrong with it but I'm going to make sure that I get those ones chopped up first it's this one's another one again damaged they won't keep long term in my fridge even so after going through them, I have one heaping box that is unblemished. These ones are in perfectly good shape. They will keep for a little while. We can use them for fresh heating, all sorts of good stuff. I might also do some other canning recipes in the upcoming future. So therefore, I've got some peppers as a backup until mine are ready. So that box is going to get set aside and then we're left with everything else on the table. And we're going to kind of sort through these, choose out the darkest, most ripe ones, because those are the ones I want for my roasted red peppers. The skin will come off those beautifully once we roast them, and then everything else is going to get chopped up. So I need at least eight pounds for my roasted red peppers, so that's where we're going to start. It's also nice to choose ones that are flat for the uh, roasted red peppers rather than all kinky and curly. Flatter is better and easier for sure. That put us over eight. It does eight and a quarter pounds. So that is, so that is what we're setting aside to make our roasted red peppers. All right, so we are well underway in our chopping up of our peppers. In total, I had 15 pounds that were set aside to be chopped up. Now, normally I would lay those out on cookie sheets and let them flash freeze and then put them in the bag, but I don't have enough cookie sheets to do that much. So what I'm doing is basically chopping them up into their usual pieces and putting half full bag. And then I just kind of it down so that it nice and lays flat, but it's not too thick of a layer. And that way, hopefully when it freezes afterwards, I can crumple it up in the bag and then combine them into bags. I know it seems like a real waste of time, long winded process, but it's what I'm going to do for now in order to make this work quickly with the space I have and the resources, i.e. the number of cookie sheets. Because right now we have fruit and everything on cookie sheets and freezers. So this is going to work because the peppers are relatively dry. So I think it'll be just fine and I'll just ruck it up. I'm not halfway through. I want to imagine I'm halfway through, but I'm not. So I'm going to keep going and then I will come back at the end and show you how many half bags that I've got to go into the freezer. And that will give us an idea of just what's put away so far for the Every Bit Counts Challenge today. Finally done. That was a lot of cutting up peppers. So from the 15 pounds, I only ended up with this one half piece left. 
So that is going to be for dinner tonight. I have two pounds of chopped up peppers in each one of these bags. I'm keeping it lying flat. And like I said, in my hopes that when it freezes, I'll be able to kind of ruck it up and it'll be easy to just take what we want out of each bag. Uh, we'll see how that goes. You'll have to stay tuned <laughs> during the winter to see if I complain about my methods for this year's preserving these. We're going to stop with the peppers for now. And I'm going to revisit that garlic that we put in the dehydrator a few days ago. It's almost a... I want to say it's four days ago now it got shut off and then got a little soft so then we had to start it up again because that's how homesteading works you kind of forget about things sometimes because there's a lot going on it's funny because people always ask why on earth do i need so many silver bowls and i say harvesting canning season that's why i must have 23 i think silver bowls and right now I'm down to two. There's something in all the rest. So it's crazy. But this isn't my biggest one, but it's what I'm going to have to use for doing this garlic. So let's take a look at how it has gone in the dehydrator. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Hear it? That is some crunchy garlic. Hopefully. Oh Smells lovely. There is nothing like fresh done garlic for garlic powder. Whoops, almost mix. Almost messed that up. Oh, I made a mess. It's going to take quite a few containers. Last one. This one was a little bit thick, but I think it'll still be okay. So now we have it like that. I'm just going to kind of like breaking up granola bars or something. It doesn't have to be perfect because all this is going to get powdered as we need it. So I'm not sure if you remember from previous videos, but I already had one and almost a half done of this crushed up garlic. And we're going to see if we're another one and a half. We're gonna, we'll fill that one half one and add another one. And hopefully we can get it in that, but we still have more to process. So let's see how this goes. It feels like it's been a busy day, yet I really haven't achieved a whole lot. I got those peppers cut up and I've organized the garlic. Almost four jars of garlic already. I'm, I'm thinking I should maybe vacuum seal some of this. I don't know if it'll puncture the bags, but that might preserve it better than just in these jars. I, I've seen those little things you can put on top to vacuum seal in jars. I don't have one. I've heard good and bad about them. If anybody has an opinion on that, I'd love to hear it in the comments because that is something that I do think would be a valuable thing for us. I just haven't had good reviews or heard good reviews on some of the brands and varieties that are out there. In the meantime, it's time for me to go and harvest this year's garlic because I have put it on the back burner and it is in bad shape out there. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you what we ended up with this year to save for next year. Well, guys, we have once again headed out into the jungle, I tell you. I don't, I'm embarrassed to show you this garlic patch. It is in real rough shape. This is not when you want to be harvesting your garlic. It should have been harvested probably at least two weeks ago. So hopefully when we get these out of the ground, the bulbs are not all disintegrated and falling apart. But we're going to get started. I'm doing our music garlic first. Basically this year we did downsize a little bit. We planted 580 cloves of garlic. I know that's downsizing, right? But we did 720 the year before. And as you can see from what we're putting away now, we don't need that much again, <laughs> unless we're gonna start selling it, which isn't the plan. So let's get this out and I will just kind of plunge away and I'll show you how much we got at the end. So it actually looks pretty decent. If you look there, it's not too broken up, but they're small. Like, I mean, that's two of them in my hand. So hopefully this first row is not an indication. I'll bring you back. Well, my friends, that is the kind of day we're having. I guess I'm going to have to go find a new shovel. So it's all hands on deck to get this job finished before the night 
sets in and we run out of daylight. But let's take a look at how much we got. So I'm going to tell you my favorite thing to make with garlic, and that is guacamole. So maybe in another video, I will have to make my guac recipe and to show you guys because it is super good. She does make the best guac. I do. I make world's best guac. There's our music garlic all laid out. About 500 cloves there. And then on this side, we have our meager Siberian garlic harvest. Not nearly as much as we were hoping for, but something is better than nothing. And we'll do better next year. Well, guys, once again, we are back in the wilderness collecting blackberries. We didn't do it in the last video, but basically we need to be doing this every couple days or else we miss them and they get gross. And it gets overgrown because I have to clear a path every single time we come into this bush. Just discovered after trailblazing this loaded patch. Now granted, there's not as many that are ripe right this moment, but there is so many still to come, which is awesome. Well, I came out and I said, I'm only going to pick two buckets because I really only need two buckets. But that's the problem with blackberry picking. It becomes an obsession because I don't want to waste anything. It's like all the apples I'm hearing falling as I'm out here. I feel, ah, oh, because I can't get to them all. But we're going to go back to pick something else right away. And I'm going to take this bucket because I'm going to see if I can fill a third one back there because there's a ton more blackberries. But one thing you'll notice here as I splice over this clip, there are so many berries left in this section alone to ripen. It is crazy. We could probably fill 30 of these buckets if we had room in the freezer. See, this is an excellent example. I said I wasn't gonna gather anymore, and look at that one. I can't resist, I have to pick those. So the other fruit that we are out foraging today is black elderberry. We have these bushes growing quite wild all over the property, as well as some propagated ones closer to the house in our food thicket. As we go around, we're definitely going to get a few and we will pop them in the dehydrator when we get in because that's how we use them. And then we just put them in teas and things like that over the winter months. So this is a great plant to have anywhere on your property. And now we're back up near the house getting some more of these wonderful black elderberries. And look at these. The plant is loaded with ones that are all nice and ripe. These are our own, what do you call them, cultivated ones? Clones. Clones, yes, from those bushes that we found at the back and a few of them from stores. But these are going to provide a lot of great berries for dehydrating. So we're back in the house. I'm going to talk about the elderberries in a moment. But for now, we need to get the blackberries in the freezer. We ended up getting three full containers. So I don't know. I really, I want to say I'm done picking blackberries. But watch this space because I'm sure I'll be back out there again in like three days. But. First, we have to empty the tray of the blackberries we put in here two days ago. And that way, that'll free up some space to freeze the new ones. So you can see here, we had quite the pile from last time. We're going to probably fill this bag and then we'll be spreading out the new ones. So as you can see, we have quite the dilemma again with our freezers. I'm thinking that we're going to have to have a freezer organization coming up here. And I think we're going to have to tally up how much fruit we have because we have put so much fruit away this year. It's incredible. It's a gift. We're not going to look at it in the mouth or whatever that saying is. I always get sayings wrong. But we have two sheep coming next week, 130 pounds of meat, and I'm not sure where we're putting it. So I guess we're going to be canning it. So I have a feeling this is going to be more than our tray can handle. Let's put the one out. One thing you'll notice is the, oh, I left a stem. The fruit is a lot darker. That, where'd that stem go? Here it is. Uh, the fruit is a lot darker this time around. It was certainly riper out there this time compared to my first pick, but that's a good thing. All right, so in the end, we ended up with, I don't know, a third of a big bowl. I have no idea how many cups this is. And I'm going to actually measure them to see how much we've got. So here goes one cup. And the nice thing is, because we mostly use these for teas or syrups, it doesn't matter if there's some stems and things in there. It'll all just kind of get caught in the tea ball. So that's two cups on that one. I got more than four cups, I think. This is awesome. Elderberry is such a great fruit to grow. Great berry, lots of uh, medicinal purposes. 
I think Chris has a video coming out on our Hickory Croft shortly all about it. So definitely make sure you're subscribed over there and watch that one as well. We're going to go two and a half. So we ended up with five cups. How awesome is that? Oops, I got them all over the table. I'm going to have to pick those up because these are too valuable to waste. They might be on here a little bit thick, but I only had two <laughs> trays for it. So we're going to get those on there and get them started. And as a bonus, since I still have my herb tray out, which I'd already set out my summer savory, we're going to put that on here for its final crisp. It's pretty crispy after being in our drying rack, but I still give it a little extra zap in the dehydrator just to make sure before we put it away for longer term storage. So bonus item for this day of the every bit counts. Stay tuned tomorrow as we, or not, well, it's not tomorrow, it's still this video, but stay tuned for tomorrow in this video where we make that roasted pepper, I don't know, I don't know what they're called, pickled roasted peppers. <laughs> Anyways, stick with me because that's what's coming next. All right, so we've uh, got our blackberries flash frozen in here and we're gonna package these up for the night and move on tomorrow to bigger and better things. So I'm hoping that two bags is gonna be enough. I apologize, we're in the midst of doing laundry, so there's a lot of noises going on, but that puts us to almost three full bags already for very, very little effort actually in the harvesting. So I'm pleased with that. We could call it a wrap for the year, but I know it won't be. Today we are on to dealing with those peppers where we're gonna make those marinated roasted peppers. And the first thing we need to do is roast them, of course. So James is hard at work taking out the seeds and cutting them in half for me. And uh, basically what we're going to do is they're gonna sit down like this. We're gonna coat them in olive oil and they're gonna go into the oven and roast. I do 375 for probably about 40 minutes. You want to be able to peel that skin off afterwards. So. That's where we're at. All right, so we've got them all laid out on the uh, tray here. James is still hard at work cutting the next round, but basically I just drizzle some olive oil over them. I use like a little brush, just straight olive oil. You don't need to put any seasoning or anything. Well guys, in typical Stephanie fashion, we are working late into the night. It is after nine o'clock and we're just starting really this canning process for these peppers. Now. What we've done is we've put them in the oven and we've roasted them and then we're going to just remove the skins off of these. They just get a little bit blackened and then we remove the skins and then we chop them to whatever size you desire for yours. I do about one and a half by two and a half inch pieces, but really it just depends how the pepper kind of falls apart. So that's the first step. And at the same time, because this is a water bath canning recipe we need to sterilize our jars so i'm going to set my oven to 225 and we're going to let those jars sterilize in there for 10 minutes we have our peppers all cut up into kind of the bite-sized pieces that i like uh, i'm going to say this is probably a liter and a half size jar maybe a two liter jar actually i don't know i put six pint jars and one half pint jar into the oven to sterilize so that I've got something to cover all my bases. I don't think we're gonna fill all six, but it'll be pretty close. Now it's time to mix up our brine. This is such a simple recipe. There isn't a whole lot in this. Basically what you're going to need is for every four pounds of peppers, you need one cup of olive oil, one cup of lemon juice, two cups of white vinegar, two cloves of garlic, and you wanna kinda of cut those up into you know halves or quarters. You want it so that you can get a little bit in every jar. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna be doubling this because I've done eight pounds of peppers. And uh, we're gonna get this going. It needs to come to a full boil. And then we pack our hot jars and away we go and into the water bath canner. Which reminds me, I'd better get my water bath canner ready. All right, so our Brine for this is just about boiling. You can see the steam coming up here. It's just starting to bubble. It won't take long because it is an oil product. So we've got our sterilized jars out and we're gonna try and evenly pack those peppers amongst them all. And then we're gonna get this liquid on top and then it's 15 minutes in the water bath canner at a full boil. So let's get going before this stuff bubbles all crazy. Now you can see here, we've got about a half inch of head space and we've made sure there's some garlic in each of those containers. So. That just lets it seep that wonderful flavor over time. 
Well, guys, we are at the end of day 12. I'll be honest with you, it is actually day 13. It got late while we were doing these peppers last night and I didn't get a chance to finish the video. So we're wrapping it up today before we plunge into the next project. But all five jars of our marinated peppers sealed beautifully. They are a wonderful treat to have in the middle of winter on those burgers and things. It just makes me feel, or it, it just reminds me of a fresh summer thing. I don't know why, but it is a wonderful treat. So five jars of those, uh, as you've seen in my pantry tours, I still have a few jars downstairs. So I don't know if we'll do any more, but I do still have this big box of peppers and just wait, just wait. Look what I found out in the garden. Actually, Chris found them, not me. He was out there checking it out. So our peppers are starting to come as well. So we may still visit this again and do some more, but I do want to get some more in the freezer before that happens. So all in all, this video was a pepper video. We got those uh, six two pound bags of peppers chopped up in the freezer. We like to use those for things like omelets, stir fries, all that throughout the winter. Hopefully this year we will have enough to see us through and we won't have to buy them during the expensive season. Then we did the marinated peppers. We picked, do we pick berries? <laughs> we picked berries, that's right. And uh, the elderberries and we're going to check on those uh, in the next video from the dehydrating perspective because they do take a little bit longer to dehydrate and we wanna make sure they're done well. So all in all, doing very, very well on dried herbs, that garlic, oh my gosh, and we still have to do more. I think that'll probably come up in the next video too. We need to process it because as you saw, we pulled all our garlic and there is a lot of garlic this year. So we've got to get going on things, my friends. But stay tuned in the next video as we once again deal with peppers. And we've also got a whole bunch of other goodies that have come from the garden, beans, squash, all that sort of stuff. Still no tomatoes, but hey, that's okay. I think tomato season is going to run into September this year. Hope you enjoyed day 10 through 12 and stay tuned for day 13 through 15 next.